The British explorer Ben Saunders is aiming to complete a world first, a solo, unaided crossing of Antarctica. He's following in the footsteps of his friend Henry Worsley, who died last year making this attempt. Our correspondent Tim Muffet went to meet Ben Saunders as he made his final preparations to complete the journey that Henry began. When you've trekked to the North and South Pole, what next? The plan is to make a solo, completely unassisted, unsupported crossing of Antarctica on foot. So I'm walking from, from one side to the South Pole and then carrying on to the opposite side of Antarctica. It's never been done before. No one's ever sort of walked across under their own human motive power. The motivation for Ben Saunders is deeply felt. His friend Henry Worsley died last year, attempting the same feat. Henry had been, uh, to me, a, a good friend for, for, for a long time. My initial reaction for a few weeks was that I didn't want anything more to do with Antarctica ever again. It just seemed too, you know, too, too tragic. I started thinking perhaps the best way to honour the, the friendship, the inspiration he gave me, would be to, to, to sort of finish the job for him. Ben, this looks absolutely exhausting. Tell us about the exercises you're having to do. Uh, well, this is a deadlift, which, is, which uses almost your whole body, it feels like. So it's a, obviously a very strong pulling movement off the floor with, with a lot of weight. This is more than twice my, my body weight. And you have to kind of bulk up with excess fat to, to last you. Literally, yes. So I, I put on, uh, since, uh, since the summer, 10 kilos, so 22 pounds, about a stone and a half. And, and some of that's muscle, some of that it, it deliberately is fat. So you got these moulded to your feet yesterday? They were done yesterday, so they're heat moulded, ready to go. Um, I mean, it must be very difficult knowing what happened to Henry, that Ben's going to attempt the same journey. Ben has prepared well. He, it's, it's his job. He's spent 17 years doing this, so I just have to trust that he knows what he's doing and he'll look after himself. Ben's last trip to the South Pole saw him complete the route which Captain Robert Falcon Scott attempted before he died in 1912. But this time, Ben will be going past the South Pole and onwards, alone. Henry Worsley's former school in Stowe in Buckinghamshire. The science block's been named in his honour. Ben wants to speak to students here before setting off. Uh, a story about the sort of highs and lows and challenges and perils and pitfalls of unusual journeys. I think it's fantastic that he's continuing Henry's dream. Hearing an inspirational story like Ben's, um, it really drives people's hair. Uh, if you're standing at the South Pole, every direction is north. Short of leaving the atmosphere and heading for a different planet, this is a, about as extreme a challenge as you can, you can find. A supreme test of fitness, endurance and human spirit lies ahead. Tim Muffet, BBC News. Remarkable. Now, our next story is... Uh in the category of don't try this at home. Another British adventurer reached heights of two and a half thousand metres and flew nearly 16 miles across South Africa in a camping chair strapped to 100 helium balloons. The 38-year-old and his team spent two days inflating the balloons ready for the flight, which he described as unbelievably cool. After a rapid ascent, he returned to Earth by gradually cutting the balloons loose. That is cool on a whole new level. <laughs> As you do. Uh, let's catch up with the weather prospect, shall we? Chris Fawkes has joined me. Hello. Hi, Jane. I can promise you all some afternoon sunshine. No strings attached.